For this video, we will assume that the brake is new. If the brake arm pins haven't been removed, do so by removing the true arc ring and tap the brake arm pins through the housing on both sides by gently tapping them through with a soft hammer. Install the brake on the machine by lifting it up and lowering it straight down over the brake drum. On model 43 and 63 machines, the brake must be tilted and lowered between the brake drum and the lower housing, sliding it over the brake drum. Now loosely fasten the four brake mounting bolts to the bed plate. Tighten the spring adjustment screws on the brake arms on each side, applying slight pressure by adjusting them so that the brake arms have equal distance from the brake housing on both sides. Next, center the plungers in the coil housing by turning each plunger equally until they make contact with each other. Then back each plunger out one and one half turns. Make sure that the centering screws do not touch the housing. Now, tighten the four brake mounting bolts. To make final adjustments to the brake, energize and de-energize the solenoid to determine that each of the arms move in and out at an equal distance. Adjust the spring adjustment screws to assure this centering. The heel and toe movement of the brake must also be equal. To make adjustments here, turn the heel and toe adjustment bolt with the solenoid repeatedly energized and de-energized to adjust the top and bottom of the shoe to get equal drum clearance. Clearance between the brake shoe and the drum may be increased or decreased by adjusting the plunger equally on each one by screwing the plungers in or out. Readjust the centering screws so that they are spaced properly to the housing. With the heel and toe adjusting plate screws partially tightened, lightly tap the side of the adjusting plate with a soft hammer to correct any twisting or crawling motion created when the shoe makes contact with the drum. Hollister Whitney has recently introduced a new disc brake, which has been designed for ease in installation and adjustment. In this presentation, we will show you several of the adjustment procedures on a Model 112 disc brake. This disc brake is featured here on our 63 model machine, which is also available with an optional brake switch as we show here. The disc brake is mounted with four mounting bolts to the bed plate. There are several adjustments that must be made. The plunger is adjusted here and should be set so that the plungers always seat or make contact with one another when energized. This contact is vital to protect the brake coil from overheating. To center the brake shoes on the disc, use the centering screw located here. In the event there would be more spring pressure on one side than the other, make the spring tension adjustment here to achieve equal pressure on both sides of the brake disc. Loosen this large nut on the spring adjustment to turn the spring to achieve the necessary load capacity. Also, all Hollister Whitney brakes have an optional handbrake release, which is easily installed by removing this acorn nut and rod, then installing the new longer rod through the solenoid housing. Should you have any questions regarding the maintenance and adjustment procedures we have demonstrated in this video, contact Hollister Whitney Elevator Corporation.